Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. The Shure SM7B is an immensely popular cardioid dynamic microphone. The SM7B has been around for decades, but it's actually, if anything, more popular now than it ever has been in the past. So today we'll be talking about the SM7B and how to get the most out of it, whether you're recording vocals or instruments or doing a podcast or video. You've heard the SM7B a million times, whether it's in a podcast, a voiceover, or on a video, or a broadcast, but it's also been used for tons of major label recordings. No less of an engineer than the legendary Bruce Swedeen, who has a massive mic collection, used the SM7 for Michael Jackson's vocals on Thriller, for example. It's also been used for recording John Mayer, James Hetfield and Metallica, Keith Urban, Bob Dylan, and tons more. The Shure SM7B was introduced in 1976, but its story actually dates back to the SM5, a broadcast microphone that was introduced in 1966. The SM5 was a huge microphone physically, and Shure wanted something more compact. So they gave their engineers free reign to work on a new microphone. They started with the Shure SM57 cartridge, which is the famous Unidyne 3 element. And they were allowed to do whatever was necessary to create a great dynamic microphone. The result is the SM7B. Now they focused on a few key elements. The SM7 diaphragm is optimized for increased low end response compared to some other dynamic microphones. The mic is more compact than the SM5, but it's still a large microphone which allows for better low end response. And it has an internal shock mount that's optimized for stand mounting. Many dynamic microphones, for example the Shure SM57 and the SM58 shock mounts, are optimized for handheld use. Now when we compare an SM57 or an SM58 to the SM7B, we find the 7B has extended full range response compared to those other microphones. It also has flatter response. And a nice feature on the SM7B is that it has two switches here on the back panel, and these shape the frequency response to whatever source you're recording. As far as specifications, the SM7B has frequency response from 50 Hz to 20,000 Hz. This is very wide for a dynamic microphone. It also has very flat response, and as I mentioned, we have two frequency shaping switches. There's a bass roll-off switch, and a mid-range enhance or presence boost switch. We also have a removable windscreen, an internal air suspension shock isolation mount, electromagnetic shielding to prevent pickup of hum, and it has excellent off-axis sound rejection. The SM7B can also handle extremely high sound pressure levels, so no problem to put it in front of a loud singer, a loud guitar amp, or a loud drum kit. So let's take a look at how to get the most out of your SM7B. Now the SM7B is famous or infamous for its low output level. The general rule is you want to preamp with at least 60 dB of gain for best results. But one of the things to watch out for is when you're cranking up the gain on a preamp, when you get it up past the sweet spot, you can start to hear that noise floor of the preamp itself coming up. So you want to make sure there's enough level feeding into the preamp to get a clean sound. The solution is to use a super clean inline mic preamp, which inserts between the microphone and your regular mic preamp or your interface to raise the output level. So some examples would be the Cloud CL1 Cloud Lifter. I've got an SE Electronics DM1 Dynamite here. There's the Royer D Booster. Soyuz has the Launcher. Radial has the McBoost, and there are others as well. And what these do is lift up the level so that when you send it into your interface or your microphone preamp, you get a cleaner signal. In addition to a generous amount of preamp gain, in general you want to work close with the SM7B microphone. I like to be about an inch or so away for the strongest bass response, and that also helps to keep the bleed and room ambience to a minimum level. Now if you want a crisper sound from this microphone, you can actually remove the foam windscreen. This will open up the top end and add a bit more clarity, but you may need to use a pop filter if you remove the windscreen. When you're pulling the windscreen off the microphone, be sure you're grabbing by the plastic ring and not by the foam fabric so that you don't tear the windscreen. You'll also want to be aware that you can change the mounting configuration for the SM7B. The way it ships, the way I have it here, is actually set up for a boom stand, so like you'd be hanging it from a boom stand over your desk or coming down over the front of a vocalist. But if you're trying to put it in front of a guitar amplifier or a drum, you may want to reverse this yoke. You can actually unscrew it and flip it down to the bottom, and this makes it easier to mount to a regular mic stand. However you're using the SM7B, I recommend experimenting with the frequency shaping switches. There's one for bass roll-off and one for a presence boost or mid-range enhance. The switches are slightly recessed, and so I use a little flathead screwdriver. It makes it easy to get in there and just slide those switches back and forth. The nice thing is that there's a graphic representation, so you can see the setting for each switch at a glance. Now the bass roll-off cuts the low end starting below 350 Hz or so, so it really takes down that bottom end and will tighten things up, especially if you have a boomy source or you're trying to get really close in. The mid-range enhance or presence boost adds a gently rising peak that starts around 800 or 900 Hz and tops out about 7000 Hz. And this is great for helping a sound cut through a mix. With two different switches and two different positions for each of those switches, we have a total of four different combinations on the microphone. Let's listen to those four combinations and hear what each sounds like. Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. This is the Shure SM7B microphone with both frequency shaping switches turned off, so we have flat response. 
Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. This is the Shure SM7B microphone with the bass roll-off switch engaged. Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. This is the Shure SM7B microphone with the mid-range enhance or presence boost switch engaged. Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. This is the Shure SM7B microphone with both the mid-range enhance and the bass roll-off switches engaged. Now let's talk about how to place the SM7B for great results no matter what source you're working with. The SM7B is extremely popular for voiceovers, for podcasts, for videos, for broadcast, and to get that big radio voice type of an effect, what I recommend is leaving the windscreen on and getting close to the microphone to take advantage of proximity effect, and that's going to boost up that low end and give you a really big sounding voice. I leave the bass roll off set flat, but you might want to try the mid-range enhance switch in both positions. In the flat position it'll be a little bit smoother, and when it's in the enhanced position it'll help cut through just a little bit more. For sung vocals, I usually remove the windscreen. I place a pop filter an inch or two away and sing an inch or two away from the pop filter. You'll want to experiment with distances to take advantage of the proximity effect or to reduce proximity effect. And again, you'll want to experiment with the switch settings. Try all four combinations and find the best one for the particular voice you're working with and the musical context you're working in. And remember, mid-range enhance is great for helping the voice cut through better. On a guitar or a bass amp, place the SM7B close to the amp speaker and be sure to experiment with the switch settings. I usually leave these flat, but again, the mid-range enhance can really help the guitar cut through. It'll make it sound a bit more like you're miking with an SM57. The bass roll-off can also help control boominess on a bass, for example. For kick drum, get in close on the head or place the microphone in a hole cut in the head. Experiment with the switch settings, of course. Mid-range enhance will bring out the attack and the snap on the beater, while the bass roll-off can be used to make the bass drum sound tighter and less boomy. The SM7B also works great on snare drum and for close miking toms. But you'll want to place the SM7B carefully so the drummer won't accidentally hit it while they're playing. For a tighter, leaner sound, turn on the bass roll off. And to bring in the stick attack and more snare rattle, turn on mid range emphasis. I hope you've enjoyed this look at how to use the Shure SM7B microphone. It's an amazingly versatile mic. You might think of it just for vocals, but you can use it on just about any source. You'll be using it constantly in your studio. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater.